Today's reading is from Mark. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the disciples went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. When's the last time you learned something new, something that rocked you to your core? When's the last time you learned something new, but you thought on reflection, hey, maybe I should have realized that before? Any good teacher knows that if a student cannot hear the information, they cannot learn it. It might not be the right moment, or it might not be the right person, or it might not be the right words. Parents marvel at the fact that their kids won't listen to them about the rules of a game or how mashed potatoes with garlic and sour cream is actually super delicious, but they might listen to a grandparent or an aunt or uncle or teacher. Have you ever tried to teach something and had to rephrase how it was said in order for that something to land? Have you ever tried to help someone understand something, but they just didn't get it until there was a light bulb moment? Sometimes we're just not ready to take on new information. Sometimes we can't hear it from that person, or we haven't heard it in the right way yet, or we're simply not ready. And it's frustrating, both for the teacher and the learner, but it's also just life. Jesus knew it too. Prophets are not without honor except where they come from and among the people who know them the best. It's highly likely that the people who changed your diapers aren't ever going to be able to think of you as particularly wise, even if you are. Jesus' closest family and friends just didn't get him and couldn't take on what he was trying to tell them because they couldn't hear that good news from him. And not only did they not get him, they took offense at him. Anyone who has lived away from their family and returned for Thanksgiving dinner knows this dynamic. Someone inevitably will wonder at this young person who is now challenging the way things are, who is willing to pose questions about, and, and about how things should be. And for those of us at the receiving end of this treatment, we also understand the dynamic of being pushed aside as a young idealist with too many big ideas. But Jesus had big ideas, lots of them. And he was doing what he could to make sure the people he loved could start to hear them. But they weren't ready for what he had to say and they couldn't hear it from him. Jesus also understood that his disciples would encounter this dynamic too, that they would encounter many people who were just not ready to hear that good news of God's love, freedom, grace, and healing. And he understood that if you're trying to teach someone who isn't ready to learn, you have to let it be. You have to shake it off and let someone else come at another time, a time that might be better. Our culture of over 
achieving and fierce independence and hustling would have us believe that we have to change the whole world all at once on our own. But the truth is that it takes many of us, all of us, using different words at different times to move the needle, to help others and our own selves hear the words of God's promise. It's never just one person, even if that one person is Jesus. He called his disciples and sent them out in twos, never alone. And he calls all of us into this Christian vocation of proclaiming the gospel, recognizing that not everyone will be able to hear it the first time from the first person. And when we inevitably encounter those situations, Jesus tells us it's okay to move on, allowing time and space for growth, recognizing that lasting change happens slowly. Jesus understood what it meant to be rejected. Jesus understands what it means to be rejected. And Jesus understands how important it is to remember that God's mission is bigger than any one person or any one moment in time. When we're frustrated because we are not learning or not getting through, Jesus reminds us that there will be a time for the right words, the right moment, and the right person. Jesus reminds us that it's okay to take a breath and shake it off, remembering that this is not the only moment, that we are not the only ones, and that he is with us on the journey. Amen.